uh, unit number 2 it is divided into two parts the cardiovascular system and nervous system okay so as our subject is uh, biomedical signal processing so we are going to learn in the beginning what type of signals are produced in the body so in unit number 1 we have seen the introduction to all different type of signals that are produced inside a human body so out of that the most important one are related to our heart and the brain that means cardiovascular system and the nervous system these are the two most important so that's why <coughs> the complete focus of this subject it is for the signals produced by cardiovascular system and the nervous system so to process the signals related to these systems uh, we should have a basic understanding of how this uh, systems work so here in the first part we are going to study introduction to heart system what is the structure of the heart how our heart functions and how uh, when we will study this function of functioning of the heart at that time we'll see the electrical activity of heart so earlier we have seen uh, what do by the potential bioelectric potential we called it as action potential so what is the potential induced in the heart that means what is the electrical activity of the heart so that we are going to study in detail and then later on the measurement of that electrical activity we call it as ecg electrocardiograph so here we will see the types of electrodes required for ecg measurement uh, what is electrocardiograph the lead configurations to measure ecg uh, what is the uh, ecg machine and heart sounds also when our heart is working you know different types of sounds are produced so we'll study in brief about the heart sounds so that is unit uh, that is first part of unit number 2 then in the second part we'll study about the nervous system so here we'll see the structure and functions of neurons electrical activity of nerve cell so this electrical activity of the nerve cell uh, we already discussed something about this earlier okay so what is synapse reflex action and receptors all those things so let us start with the first part that is cardiovascular system introduction to heart system so before i proceed i am going to show you uh, one video and after that we'll proceed towards the content of the presentation that means the syllabus okay so i'm just sharing one video here it is just a 4 uh, minute 4 to 5 minutes video how our heart system works then after that we'll continue with my presentation so this video is going to show you how our heart works and then after that uh, you will have some basic understanding then we'll go to the uh, points from the presentation our heart is a muscular organ which is protected by the rib cage the heart is divided into four chambers The two upper chambers of heart are called right atrium and left atrium. And the two lower chambers of heart are called right ventricle and left ventricle. Inferior vena cava and superior vena cava carry the oxygenated blood to the right atrium of the heart blood flows from the right atrium into the right ventricle through the open tricuspid valve
When the ventricles are full, the tricuspid valve shuts. Blood leaves the right ventricle through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery for oxygenation. The pulmonary veins carry oxygenated blood to the left atrium. Blood flows from the left atrium into the left ventricle through the open mitral valve. When the ventricles are full, the mitral valve shuts. Blood leaves the left ventricle through the aortic valve into the aorta and to the body. Okay, my inter uh, internet connection was uh, disconnected automatically, so there was an interruption. I will share it again. Chambers. The two upper chambers of heart are called right atrium and left atrium. And the two lower chambers of heart are called right ventricle and left ventricle. Inferior vena cava and superior vena cava carry deoxygenated blood to the right atrium of the heart. Blood flows from the right atrium into the right ventricle through the open tricuspid valve. When the ventricles are full, the tricuspid valve shuts. Blood leaves the right ventricle through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery for oxygenation. The pulmonary veins carry oxygenated blood to the left atrium. Blood flows from the left atrium into the left ventricle through the open mitral valve. When the ventricles are full, the mitral valve shuts. Blood leaves the left ventricle through the aortic valve into the aorta and to the body. And this is how the heart functions continuously.
now we'll proceed this now uh, you have a brief idea about the function of the heart now we'll discuss all these things in further details okay so so it was a cardiovascular system okay now what we have seen in medical terminology it is called as the physiology so physiology uh, it is div divided into different parts cell physiology that is the study of cells pathophysiology the, that, that is study of pathological functions circulatory physiology it is a study of blood circulation so what we have seen in the previous video it was about this circulatory physiology then the respiratory physiology that is study of breathing organs now in this lecture we'll study in uh, somewhat details the functioning of our cardiovascular system and the in the next lecture we'll study about the electrical activity of that okay so cardiovascular system and physiology of the heart so what we are going to study is the components of the cardiovascular system <coughs> the functioning of uh, cardiovascular system it is divided into two parts systematic uh, systemic circulation and pulmonary circulation so that is the circulation of the pure blood and the impure blood so that we'll see then basic functions of various parts of cvs that means the uh, cardiovascular system then general functions of cvs cardiovascular system physiology uh, physiological anatomy of heart blood vessels what is the functionality of blood vessels in cardiovascular system and heart sounds so because heart sound it is a signal so that signal can be processed with the help of dsp so we'll also study what are uh, ha what are the heart sounds for the normal and under abnormal conditions okay then characteristics of blood this uh, i will just skip this is not so important for us okay so let us start with the functioning of cardiovascular system now uh, in the video what we have seen uh, you have seen there uh, the heart is divided into four chambers so it is actually a hydraulic system so there is hydraulic engineering in that uh, it's four chambers it is a pump with four chambers upper two chambers are called as the atria uh, left atrium and uh, right atrium similarly the bottom two chambers are the ventricles these are left ventricle and the right ventricle uh, heart provides the driving force for the cardiovascular system so the action actually it, it is initiated in the heart and it it continuously works as a hydraulic pump and pumps the blood in our body it is a closed system so it is a circulatory system now we'll see how exactly it is a closed system that, that right so that means whatever blood is coming out the same blood after circulating through the body it again enters the heart so it is a closed system so heart it is actually a pump and it is connected with tubes that means the pipes but in our body these tubes are in flexible in nature and the tubes they again uh, get divided into smaller smaller tubes called as blood vessels uh, the cardio the functionality of cardiovascular system is transportation of oxygen to the different parts of the different organs then carbon dioxide transfer carbon dioxide numerous chemical compounds and blood cells so this is the functionality of the cardiovascular system blood is carried out to the various parts of the body through blood vessels there are three types of blood vessels called as arteries so these arteries are thick and carries oxygenated blood then there are veins which are thin and which carry deoxygenated blood that means impure blood 
and there are capillaries so capillaries they, these are the very uh, small smallest vessels uh, tubes you can say flexible pipes uh, and these capillaries they uh, supply blood to all uh, even uh, the smallest part of the body that means the cells okay and in our body there are 8 lakh kilometer of total capillaries okay now this diagram shows now as i in the previous slide i told it is a it is a closed system it is a closed system so this is what is indicated by this diagram right it is a heart a heart supplies the pure blood to arteries then from arteries is goes to arterioles from arterioles it goes to capillaries capillaries are as we have seen these are the smallest last level of blood vessels then from capillaries it goes to venules now from uh, this uh, capillaries they also collect the impure blood from the cells deoxygenated blood and then through venules it is goes to the vein and then veins supply this deoxygenated blood to again heart so this is the closed system in some part of the system diameter of the arteries are changed to control the pressure so these arteries these are actually flexible in nature and the diameter of this arteries is automatically changed it keeps on changing to control the pressure and this control signals are available from our nervous system so pump that means the heart is isolated two stage synchronized chamber the first stage is to collect blood from the system and pump it to the second stage during the second stage the pump the second stage then pumps this blood to the system so this is how it works as a two stage pump collecting blood from the system and supplying blood to the system so that's why it is a two stage pump venules and veins which carry the blood back from the tissues to the heart so veins carry blood back from the tissues to the heart and arteries they supply the pure blood that means oxygenated blood to the tissues so there are arteries and veins so veins serve as reservoirs and collect the blood to return it to the heart as we have seen earlier the blood capillaries form a network of fine vessels connecting the arterioles with the venules the blood capillaries are the sites of exchange of gases so in blood capillaries the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen takes place as well as nutrients waste products between the blood and the tissues so nutrients are absorbed from the capillaries and the waste products are transferred from the capillaries to the veins okay so we have seen discuss the capillaries and capillaries means the arteries and veins okay now let us see what exactly happens so we have seen earlier the heart it works at a two stage pump so what you see here the red color it is the oxygenated blood and the blue color it is a deoxygenated blood okay so what you see this side this is our respiratory system on the right hand side so from respiratory system the oxygenated blood it is collected 
and it goes to the pulmonary vents this pulma this oxygenated blood enters in the left atrium and from this valve bicuspid valve it enters to the left ventricle then the left ventricle pumps from this left ventricle it is pumped to the organs so this is uh, these are various organs or the tissues where this pure blood is circulated now here the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen happens oxygen is supplied here and the carbon dioxide is connect, collected by this blood and that's why it it turns into blue color so this is a deoxygenated blood then again again it goes to the heart it enters through vena cava and it enters in the right atrium of the heart then through this wall it enters into right ventricle then right ventricle through right ventricle again it is pumped this deoxygenated blood it is pumped to the lungs via this pulmonary arteries so this is how it keeps on working so in the this in the lungs there is a exchange of carbon dioxide and the oxygen takes place that means the carbon dioxide is absorbed here and the oxygen is supplied to the heart whereas uh, in our tissues or the organs oxygen is absorbed and the carbon dioxide it is supplied to heart so this is how it works as a double pump okay so cardiovascular system is actually made up of two major circulatory systems that is pulmonary artery and pulmonary vents so the right side of the heart pumps blood to the lungs through pulmonary artery pulmonary capillaries and then return blood to the left atrium from the pulmonary vents so the left side of the heart pumps blood to the rest of the body through aorta arteries arterioles systematic capillaries and returns the blood to the left right atrium through the venules and vents so this is right side right side of the heart and this is left side of the heart so as we have seen there are two circulations in the cardiovascular system blood passes through passes through two circulations in series so one full circulation consists of this two circulations together both circulations start and end in the heart okay so these two circulations we call it as the systemic circulation so in case of systemic circulation it starts from the left ventricle of the heart then from left ventricle ventricle it enters into the aorta in then to systematic systemic arteries then systemic capillaries systematic systemic vents and then superior and inferior vena cava and again ends in the right atrium so in this capillaries the exchange of oxygen takes place that means oxygen oxygen is supplied here oxygen is supplied and the carbon dioxide is given out from this okay so that that means here the deoxygenated blood it is given to the systemic vents and then it goes to the heart in the artery then the other is the sir, pulm, pulmonary circulation so it starts with the right ventricle from the right ventricle to pulmonary trunk pulmonary arteries pulmonary capillaries then pulmonary vents and ends to the left atrium okay so this is how the heart looks from outside as we have seen it is divided into four chambers upper one 
upper two chambers are called as the right atrium and the left atrium the bottom two chambers are the right ventricle and left ventricle and there is superior vena cava which carries deoxygenated blood and there is a pulmonary artery which carries uh, which collects the blood from oxygenated blood from the lungs then there is aorta here now inside our heart as we have seen it is a pump so there are four valves in the heart these valves control flow of blood from one chamber to the other and they also prevent back flow of the blood from uh, from the two chambers now we'll see exactly how this happens with the help of one diagram so there are two functionalities of the heart they control flow of water uh, flow of blood from one chamber to the other chamber and they also prevent for the black back flow of the blood okay so there is a tricuspid valve here between the right atrium and the right ventricle and there is a mitral valve there are four four valves i told so let us start with the first one a uh, first one okay tricuspid valve here between the right atrium and the right ventricle then bicuspid valve uh, this is bicuspid valve between left atrium and it is bicuspid is between atrio ventricular valve so it is between left and atrium and ventricle okay then there is a mitral valve and aortic valve uh, from aorta blood enters inside the ventricle so there is a aortic valve so pulmonary valve aortic valve this these are the, uh, these two valves are connecting heart with the arteries and the veins and this tricuspid valve and the bicuspid valve this is between atriums and the ventricles okay so tricuspid valve it is also called as the right atrioventricular valve this one between the right atrium and ventrium prevents blood flow from ventrium to atrium okay then bicuspid valve as you see in this diagram bicuspid valve it is between left atrium and ventrium prevents blood flow from ventrium to atrium then pulmonary valve this is between right this is in the right ventricle where this pulmonary vents are connected okay so it has three curves then aortic valve between left ventricle and the aorta so these are four valves okay now with the help of these four valves let us see in this diagram in this block diagram how actually the circulation of the blood takes place now as we have seen we know this the deoxygenated blood it enters inside the lungs and here in the lungs the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen takes place so the oxygenated blood it comes outside of the lungs and it is it enters in the left atrium left atrium then left left uh, now here there are four uh, four valves we have seen this one valve here second valve here third this third valve here 
four walls one two three and four okay so the deoxygenated oxygenated blood it enters inside the left atrium left at from left atrium it went, enters into left ventricle then left ventricle pumps this blood to various parts of the body so this oxygenated blood it is supplied to various parts of the body tissues and organs now now uh, inside the uh, now he, here the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide happens uh, through the capillaries so oxygenated blood en enters inside the organs and there is the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen so the deoxygenated blood it comes outside of various organs of the body then the deoxygenated blood it goes to right atrium then from right atrium it enters into right ventricle through the wall here so from right ventricle it is forced to lungs for the purpose of exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen so this is actually the basic functionality of heart all detailed things are not expected here but because since we are later on we are going to study the signals associated with this heart so that's why we should know the basic functionality of the heart okay so again the same diagram it is shown differently so it is shown here a left heart and a right heart okay so oxygenated blood from the lungs it enters inside the left heart then left heart it pumps the oxygenated blood to various parts of the body abdomen muscles kidney skin and others then the deoxygenated blood which contains carbon dioxide it comes out from various parts of this body so then this deoxygenated blood it enters inside the right heart then the right heart it pumps this impure blood or the deoxygenated blood to lungs so this is how our basically this thing works okay and brain now while supplying this oxygenated blood to various parts of the body now uh, uh, now we know uh, heart is also one part of the body so heart also needs its uh, heart also needs uh, blood for its own working and the blood supply to the tissues of the heart it happens through coronary corona artery what is shown here similarly the oxygenated blood it is also supplied to the brain then from brain the deoxygenated blood which contains carbon dioxide it is again it enters into the heart right heart and it goes to the lungs so that means there are two the heart is divided into two parts a right heart and a left heart so left heart it is actually supplying a pure blood that means the oxygenated blood to various parts of the body and the right heart it collects the deoxygenated blood from different parts of the body so that is what in short so the same Uh, this block diagram now this is some uh, shown here with, with some more details okay so let us start from okay so the red color shows the oxygenated blood which which comes outside of the heart left heart so actually the left heart it requires more pressure to supply the blood to various parts of the body so from left heart as we have seen earlier it goes to the various parts various parts of the body it goes to various parts of the body it also goes to brain so as you see here brain arms trunk digestive tract then renal arteries that means the kidneys 
pelvis and the legs right then from all these parts it is again collected back then after collecting back the deoxygenated blood it enters in the heart through this vena cava so vena cava it collects the impure blood from various organs and it it supplies it pumps this blood deoxygenated blood to right atrium then this right atrium through this wall this blood enters inside the left ventri uh, left ventricle then the left ventricle it pumps this blood to the lungs for purification purpose so this is how our cardiovascular system works it is the same thing again same thing shown here left atrium pumping the oxygenated blood through bicuspid valve to left ventricle from left ventricle through aorta to various parts of the body then in capillary is the exchange of oxygen and the carbon dioxide takes place then the blood with carbon dioxide that means the deoxygenated blood through veins it enters through the vena cava in the right atrium of the heart then from right atrium it enters into right ventricle then from right ventricle it is pumped to lungs for purification purpose and here okay now in the lungs the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen oxygen takes place okay so this is the working of this cardiovascular system this same thing actually it is repeating there are different types of diagram now here this shows the different uh, veins and arteries okay so superior vena cava which which carries the deoxygenated blood aortic wall here right pulmonary artery right atrium all these things we already discussed tricuspid valve here there are four valves tricuspid valve bicuspid valve left ventricle inter interventricular septum so this this part interventricular septum this is actually a partition this is the partition between left and right ventricles so this is the diagram which shows the chambers of the heart and various valves the same thing again now in this diagram you can clearly see the flow so the deoxygenated blood from from lungs that is the in shown in blue color comes here through this wall it it comes into through this uh, superior vena cava it enters inside the right atrium from this wall tricuspid wall it enters into right ventricle then from right ventricle it is pumped to the lungs for exchange purpose then the pure blood it enters here left pulmonary veins then uh, it enters into left atrium then uh, left ventricle from left ventricle it goes out from the aorta it is from aorta it goes to different parts of the body okay heart layers now as far as the construction of the heart is considered uh, there are four layers the pericardium myocardium and the endocardium three layers pericardium the outermost layer myocardium it is the middle layer endocardium it is the inner layer of the heart that is the inner lining so that is what 
you can see here endocardium myocardium and pericardium we have seen pericardial cavity okay so pericardium it is the outermost layer what you see here this is pericardium the outermost layer there is some liquid here this serous membrane there is some liquid because the heart is continuously contracting and expanding so it requires some uh, lubricant so the function of that liquid some it is just like providing some lubricant for the heart okay so heart pumps blood through the pul pulmonary circulation to the lungs and through the systematic cir circulation to other parts of the body so systematic circulation means supplying blood blood to the other parts of the body and pul pulmonary circulation is supplying the deoxygenated blood to lungs so as we have seen earlier it is divided into two parts pulmonary and systemic so pulmonary circulation systemic circulation pulmonary circulation it is the venous blood that means the deoxygenated blood flows from right ventricle through pulmonary artery to the lungs and arterial blood that means the oxygenated blood flows to left atrium through pulmonary veins so many things actually i repeated so that it should be clear here so systemic systemic circulation blood flows from left auricle to the left ventricle and it is pumped to aorta okay so respiratory system in short we'll discuss, discuss next time just highlights so this is about cardiovascular system okay